While revolutionaries as individuals can be murdered, you cannot kill their ideas. This is a popular quote that I bet you've come across dozens of times in your lifetime. But did you know that this quote was first coined by the late Thomas Sinkara, who was the president of Burkina Faso four decades ago? Yes, Thomas Sinkara, who was one of Africa's most admired revolutionaries and nationalists of the 20th century, coined that quote as he fought for a liberation of his people from the yokes of neo colonialism, imperialism, and poverty. And decades after his unfortunate assassination, it has come to sound like his prophesy that is coming true. We say this because in Burkina Faso, a new revolutionary leader with characteristics of Thomas Sinkara has been born, and he seems determined to carry on with the work that Captain Thomas Sinkara was doing for his people until he was assassinated on October 15, 1987. The new Sinkara is called Captain Ibrahim Traoré, the interim president of Burkina Faso who has taken over the world by a storm. In Captain Ibrahim Traoré, we see lots of Captain Thomas Sinkara's characteristics and that's why we have prepared this video to bring to you the similarities between these two sons of Burkina Faso. But before we proceed to looking at those similarities, here is a brief story of Thomas Sinkara, as summarized by a Kenyan pan-Africanist called P. L. O. Lumumba. I listen to the more casual works and I read the casual works of a young leader in the 1980s such as Thomas Sankara. You know, Thomas Sankara is a young individual whose claim to formal education was not very much. He did not hold any PhD. He was an army officer. He overthrows the government of Upper Volta and he goes into government and poses the question, why are we called Upper Volta? And he says the first thing that we must do is to change the name of this country so that it becomes Burkina Faso, the land of the upright man and that the people of this country must be called the Bukinabe, the upright people. And he says we have been suffering if with hunger and food shortages for too long. We have depended on France for too long. We can no longer be children and toddlers in our adulthood. We cannot be in economic and political diapers for too long. And he begins to release the country. And no sooner has he succeeded in doing this, and the erstwhile colonial power says that this is a bad example and they eliminate him yes that is how burkina faso or rather africa lost one of the best leaders it ever had a leader who would have turned around the landlocked sahel country to greatness however all seems not to be lost and there is yet another chance for a sinkara era to take shape in burkina faso under captain ibrahim traore so without say much the following are the 10 similarities between Captain Thomas Sinkara and Captain Ibrahim Traoré. Number 1, they are both presidents. Thomas Sinkara was the president of Burkina Faso from 1983 to 1987. Ibrahim Traoré has been president of Burkina Faso since October 6, 2022, and is set to hand over or participate in the democratic elections of 2024. Number 2, both rose to power through military coups. Thomas Sinkara became president of Burkina Faso, after a coup d'etat that was organized by Blaise Compaoré against Jean-Baptiste Wadrogo on 4 August 1983. Ibrahim Traoré on the other hand became the interim president of Burkina Faso following the 30 September 2022 military coup which ousted interim president Paul Henry Sandrogo de Miba. Number 3, both rose to power at the same age. Thomas Sinkara who was born in 1949 became president at the age of 33, while Ibrahim Traoré, who was born in 1988, a few months after Sinkara's death became president some few months to his 34th birthday. Number 4, both were highly intelligent and talented students who could have succeeded in any career, but chose to serve in the military. Thomas Sinkara was born in Yako in northern Burkina Faso, but got his primary school education from Bobo Dialasso. He was a dedicated learner who took his schoolwork seriously and excelled in mathematics and French. He went to church often, and impressed with his energy and eagerness to learn, some of the priests encouraged him to join a seminary school once he finished primary school. Despite initially agreeing, he took the exam required for entry to the sixth grade in the secular educational system and passed thereby avoiding taking a path in religion. His Roman Catholic parents also wanted him to become a priest 
but he chose to enter the military because the military was popular amongst young intellectuals, who believed it was a national institution that might potentially help to discipline the inefficient and corrupt bureaucracies in the country, and generally help modernize the country. After being accepted in the military and upon taking the entrance exam, which he passed very well, Sinkara, who could not easily afford the costs of further education outside the military, entered the military academy of Kadiogo in Wagadugu with the academy's first intake of 1966 at the age of 17. While there, he witnessed the first military coup d'etat in the country that was led by Lieutenant Colonel Sangale Lamazana on 3 January 1966. Then at the academy, the trainee officers were taught by civilian professors in the social sciences, with Adama Torre who was the academic director and teacher of history and geography privately sharing with his brightest and political students among them Sinkara, his progressive ideas even though he did not publicly share them. In those private discussions, they oftentimes talked about imperialism, neocolonialism, socialism, communism, the Soviet and Chinese revolutions, the liberation movements in Africa and similar topics outside of the classroom. This was the first time Sinkara was systematically exposed to a revolutionary perspective. At the age of 20 in 1970, Sinkara went on for further military studies at the Military Academy of Ansarabe in Madagascar, from where he graduated as a junior officer in 1973. But what's important is that, at the Ansarabe Academy, the training went beyond standard military subjects and it allowed Sinkara to study agriculture, including how to raise crop yields and better the lives of farmers, themes which he later adopted in his country as president. Aside from his academic and extracurricular political activities, Sinkara also pursued his passion for music and played the guitar. Ibrahim Traore on the other hand was born in Bondokui village in Mohon province and after receiving his primary education in Bondokui, he attended a high school in Bobo Dialasso, where he became known as being a quiet and very talented student. From 2006, he studied at the University of Ouagadougou where he graduated from the university with honors. He later joined the army of Burkina Faso in 2009, and quickly began to climb the ranks. He was sent to Morocco for anti-aircraft training before being transferred to an infantry unit in Kaya, which is a town in Burkina Faso's north. He was promoted to lieutenant in 2014 and joined the United Nations Peacekeeping Force in Mali and his courage in the peacekeeping force and subsequently in the Bukanabe army's fight against jihadists saw him promoted to captain in 2020, after which he was seen as the ideal army man to lead the country as president following the September 30, 2022 coup. Number 5. Both are anti-imperialism and anti-neocolonialism. Thomas Sinkara really hated imperialism and neocolonialism that he chose to lead a socialist non-alliance state that didn't look up to foreign powers for its sustainability, because he knew such aid came with strings attached, and made leaders technically puppets. Ibrahim Traoré has been openly against imperialism and neocolonialism, blasting what he calls puppets of the West in Africa and calling on the African Union to support leaders who rise to fight against neocolonialism. A slave that does not rebel does not deserve pity. The African Union must stop condemning Africans who decide to fight against their own puppet regimes of the West. Number 6. Both are nationalists and pan-Africanists. Thomas Sinkara believed in Burkina Faso and Africa's potential to develop itself. Ibrahim Traoré believes that Africa has all the necessary resources it needs to propel itself to prosperity and needs to unite to realize its potential. Number 7. Both believe in the military as a tool for bringing change. After rising to power through the military, both Thomas Sinkara and Ibrahim Traoré believed that the military can be used by Africans to fight against puppets of the West, fight unnecessary inefficiencies and bureaucracies in countries and bring about necessary social, economic and political reforms. Number 8. Both are charismatic and eloquent. Thomas Sinkara was a charismatic leader and he used to communicate his ideas to his people and the world very well. Charismatic. Le capitaine Thomas Sankara. La même nuit, l'ancien premier ministre proclame la révolution démocratique. Today, Ibrahim Traoré is just like that. He knows how to express himself and his ideas very well. So much so, that people can't struggle to understand him or what he's communicating. Ce qui est le problème, c'est de voir des chefs d'État africains qui n'apportent rien à ces peuples qui se battent, mais qui chantent la même chose que les impérialistes 
en nous traitant de milices, en nous traitant donc d'hommes qui ne respectent pas les droits de l'homme. De quel droit de l'homme parle-t-on Number 9. Both command respect and everyone listens when they're speaking. Being a natural and highly respected leader, Thomas Sinkara's speeches always attracted the attention of multitudes both home and abroad, and everyone carefully listened to him whenever he spoke. Then Ibrahim Traoré has been commanding the same respect at home since taking power, and the second Russia-Africa summit saw him earn unending praises from the world following his epic speech in front of Vladimir Putin and dozens of African heads of state and foreign delegates. Number 10. Both are revolutionaries who believe in service to the people. Thomas Sinkara devoted all his life to serving the people of Burkina Faso, participating in building brick houses for the poor, working on access to clean water for all, running intensive vaccination drives and investing in the health sector, investing in education, actively participating in tree planting exercises to turn the country green and so much more. Just like Thomas Sinkara, Ibrahim Traoré believes in putting his people first and has as well been working on improving their lives in the aforementioned areas. Number 11. Both are loved by their people, in Africa and abroad. Thomas Sinkara was loved by a majority of Burkina Faso people from all works of life, that is men, women, children and the elderly alike and he could easily interact with them despite being a military man. He commanded the same admiration within the African continent and even abroad with millions of individuals seeing him as their role model. Today, Captain Traoré's popularity has been fast rising in his country since his leadership has relatively stabilized Burkina Faso. He has also become popular within Africa and even gained popularity abroad, especially after his impressive conduct at the second Russia-Africa summit that was held in late July 2023. Number 12. Both believe in a country's self-reliance. Soon after taking over power as president, Thomas Sinkara put in drastic measures to guarantee Burkina Faso's self-reliance since he believed in a free non-alliance socialist state. He worked for Burkina Faso people to produce their own food, produce their own cotton and textile products, wear locally produced clothes and wean themselves from dependence on foreign aid and imports. Then soon after taking oath of office as president of the transitional government, Ibrahim Traoré told his people to brace themselves for working towards self-reliance and forget about aid from foreign powers like France. He wants to make Burkina Faso to produce its own food, manufacture a wide variety of its own products as well as weapons. He even believes that Burkina Faso will need to build a nuclear power plant sometime in the coming future for it to meet its energy needs and establish factories that will guarantee that self-reliance. Nous avons un besoin crucial d'énergie. À ce titre, donc, c'est un point important pour moi parce que nous avons besoin, en tout cas, si possible, d'implanter une centrale nucléaire. Number 13. Both are big defenders and empowers of women. Thomas Sinkara was not only a political revolutionary, but also a social revolutionary who championed for women's rights, and believed in empowering of women in his fight against social inequalities in his country. Through his many speeches and in his book titled, The Emancipation of Women and the Liberation of Africa, as well as in his actions as the head of state, he devoted the four years of his presidency to the defense and promotion of women's rights, and we see the same being done by Captain Ibrahim Traoré. Traoré has not left behind women in his equation of emancipation of his people from poverty, he has been putting in place various programs and taking deliberate approaches to empower women in Burkina Faso's poor villages to guarantee wholesome development of the country. Number 14, both have left behind famous quotes. There are lots of famous quotes that Captain Sinkara left behind, among them one on emancipation of women in which he said that, a human being, however oppressed, will find another human being to oppress, that is his wife. Then the most recent and famous quote by Captain Traoré goes that, a slave who does not rebel does not deserve pity. C'est décevant, parce que en Europe, lorsque des peuples prennent les armes pour défendre leur patrie, on les traite de patriotes. Nos grands-pères ont été déportés pour sauver l'Europe. Our number 15 is that the only notable difference between Thomas Sinkara and Ibrahim Traoré is that Sinkara was a devoted Catholic or rather Christian while Traoré is a Muslim. Today, 
Captain Ibrahim Traoré, who promised to hold democratic elections in the country in July 2024, holds the distinction of being the world's youngest serving head of state. Would you wish to see Ibrahim Traoré serve beyond July 2024 upon expiry of his term as the interim president? Leave your thoughts on Thomas Sinkara and Ibrahim Traoré in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe before leaving.